Vampire the Masquerade has quite a lot going on for it. It has more history in it than Werewolf the Apocalypse, and that's saying a lot because I've done a lot of Werewolf the Apocalypse thus far. In today's video, I wanted to talk a little bit about the vampires of the Masquerade. Vampire the Masquerade. I just wanted to give a high level overview of the clans, similar to my Changing Breed video that I did for the werewolves. And then I do plan to deep dive in the future each one of these clans, tell you about them from the perspective of the 20th anniversary edition, the newest edition of Vampire, 5th edition, and also give a werewolf perspective on the clans. So there's a lot to cover. If you're interested in following me on this journey as I progress through it, then please hit that subscribe button with that bell notification so you know when my videos are available. If you do find some value out of the video, I will be discussing my Patreon at the end, so there will be that. The Asamites, as they were known in the 20th anniversary edition, or as Clan Banu Hakim in its 5th edition naming convention, they are the Clan of Assassins. Those lovable little exterminators of humans and mortals. They have a secret fortress in the Middle East, which is where they originally hail from, but are not exclusive from that location anymore. They do have a negative perception when it comes to some of the other vampire clans, but they see themselves as protectors and guardians. Scholars who are trying to distance themselves from the Jihad. If I had to hazard a guess, this particular vampire clan, if they had to work with some werewolves, it would probably be the Shadow Lords. Although they don't come from the same place, the Shadow Lords have in the past worked with vampires to their own ends. The Bruja clan are lone wolves, loners who tend to move off into the woods. They might be a little more susceptible to tinfoil hat conspiracy theories, although maybe they actually know what's going on, you never know. They do, however, have a little bit of a problem when it comes to rage, and so they have a tendency to go into frenzy a little bit more often than other clans. If this particular clan was to work with any werewolves, I would imagine they would probably work with the Bone Gnars. The Gangrel are masters of animals, animal husbandry. They tend to have very well-trained pets, and they tend to resemble these pets in their own physical appearance. They do tend to live on the fringes of society as well, mainly somewhere where they can raise their animals. In 5th edition of Vampire, Clan Hakata replaces two vampire clans from 20th Anniversary Edition and earlier than that, Clan Cappadocian and the Giovanni. In 5th edition, these two clans represent basically the Clan of Death. The Giovanni from previous editions were essentially necromancers. The Cappadocians were also masters of spirits and the soul. So it makes sense that these two clans in the modern game would be merged together. The Giovanni were more like a mafia style family. And the way I would interpret this, if I was playing one now, it would, even if you were in Clan Hakata, I would still play it as if it was part of a mob family or an, a vampire mob style family. The La Sombra are very proud. They have extreme control over shadow and darkness, not to be confused with death. They are extremely self-interested and self-centered. They exist for their own success. In their eyes, the strong rule and the strong get to make the rules. The Get of Fenris would almost respect this mentality, but, but they don't, but, but they might. Clan Malkavian are some of the most infamous vampires because bitches be crazy. They tend to have a lot of weird compulsions. They also tend to have a lot of very weird quirks. And a lot of them tend to like practical jokes, some of which range from the innocent to the quite gruesome. Clan Ministry, formerly known as Followers of Set. They are a very religious movement and they've adjusted themselves to be more modern. As a religious organization, they have gone out to protect their ancient artifacts, at least where they know they are. And the Orthodox Setites believe that Set will one day return. They refer to themselves as a clan as Mesu Bedshet, or the Children of Rebellion. If you're running a vampire game and you wanted to have some werewolves in it, it would be possible that this particular clan of vampires would work with the children of Gaia. At least that's what I can see from the top of my head. There would need to be a compelling reason, but it could be done. The Nosferatu are the disgusting, horridly disfigured vampires that you see living in the sewers. They're the ones that pop out of the toilet and bite you in the ass. 
They are very effective spy masters, and they deal in information. Nosferatus would probably clash quite a bit with the Bone Nars. I can also see them having some significant clashes with the Ratkin. Clan Ravnos are mentalists. They make you see things that aren't there, or not see things that are actually happening. They do have very specific and unique desires, and are fairly beholden to these desires as well. Being that they do practice their art of deception and theft on basically anyone they can, I can see this clan working somewhat with the Nuisha. And the Nuisha are tricksters. I can see them working well together or terribly together, depending on which... <laughs> depending on how strong the personalities are. The Toreador clan, they exude sexual energy. They are very charged when it comes to 18 plus content. They idolize beauty and being revered by their thralls. The vampire legends that exist around seduction and luring their prey with their bodies, that's this group. The Tremere are your vampire warlocks. They are a very powerful clan and they are very well entrenched in vampire society. They are masters of thaumaturgy, secret societies, and they have a very strict hierarchy, which they very much enforce. The Zemisi are very old. They are bone mages. They warp their flesh and bone of not only themselves, but others, which is very painful if you're on the receiving end of one who is angry. They are trying to push the boundaries of what a vampire can be, what it can evolve to. If you ever met a Zemisi in person, they would be very polite upon initial greetings, but the more you got to know them, the more the onion would unravel, and the more monstrous they would become. Clan Ventru, they like to create their vampires from kings, queens, warlords, knights, anybody that was of extreme importance and extreme wealth. This is also a very wealthy clan. They are also the most vocal supporters of the Camarilla and the Masquerade. That is a quick rundown of all of the clans that are in Vampire the Masquerade. I will be doing some more in-depth videos on each clan, so if you want to see one specific, please let me know in the comments below. I would also like to talk about them in these videos uh, from a werewolf perspective or trying to tie in a werewolf perspective. We'll see how much I have to break these videos up because there's just, there's just so much. This game has been around a very long time. I'm looking forward to it. I hope you are as well. Shout out to my patrons who continue to support me in the channel. I am ever so grateful for your continued support. Autumn Alchemist, Orbs McMellons, RRSPQ, Ducky, Vox, Caneroot, Warpony, Get of Math Rocks, BA Bravo, Arutvin, The First Layer, Bones Malone, Westheimer, and Ain't No Waifu. Thank you all for your ongoing support. Up on your screen now, I will have a playlist of Vampire the Masquerade. At the time of this recording, there was only one video in it, but I'm hoping to continue to add to it. My name's Nathaniel. This has been The Maple Table. Thank you so much for watching, and thanks for stopping by, everyone.